You're watching Griffin Sports Insider, presented by Spine and Sport Physical Therapy. Now, here are your hosts, Brett Easley and Ryan Menley. There it is. History making sacks, nationally ranked attacks. Hey, get out your ammo and put on the camo. Also, bring your appetite because your weekly dose of GSI starts right now. Hello and welcome. We begin with football. The Griffins are 2-0 and and up six spots to number eight in the nation in this week's AFCA Division II football poll. In case you were wondering, I did bring my appetite. I always do. That's good. Griffins prepared to honor the military Saturday night while doing battle with Nebraska Kearney. But before we look ahead, we look back to week two, a history-making performance against William Jewell. Week two, Missouri Western taking a break from MIAA play and taking on William Jewell College. This is the general. It's the touchdown cannon, and it got a lot of work Saturday. This game was like watching someone play rookie mode on Madden. First quarter, Griffin's first possession, second play from scrimmage. Mike Hill is gone. Untouched, 52 yards into the end zone. 7 0 Griffs after 48 seconds of play. Oh boy. A couple minutes later, they're in the red zone. Travis Partridge to Reggie Jordan from 11 yards out. Touchdown, shots fired. Jewel, though, trying to answer in the first, near the goal line and threatening, but the Griffins' Mark Harrison forces the fumble. Nick Williams recovers, and that's as close as the Cardinals would get to the end zone the rest of the night. Second quarter historical moment. Senior David Bass, career sack number 31. This one makes him the program's all-time sack leader. When you come in, you're looking at the record books, you like, you starting off at zero, and then, matter of fact, I don't say my freshman, I probably didn't even look at it. As a sophomore, I'm like, who would ever uh, be able to take the records that's already set? I'm thinking like, well, I'm going to do my best right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to break the record, but it feels great to have a record. I've been here long enough, so. Meanwhile, Griffin's still punishing Jewel from the ground. Dom Thomas shot out of a cannon himself. 26 yards to pay dirt, now 21 nothing. Griffin's had 398 yards rushing on the day and it didn't matter who touched it. Case in point, Raphael Spencer. This is his first career collegiate carry. I feel good, I mean, it's, uh, I've been waiting for it for a long time and uh, I just wanna thank my lineman for it. Griffin's go up 35 to nothing at halftime and the cannon literally did run out of ammo this week. We're actually gonna have to go and get more propane at, uh, at halftime. Third quarter, the video game continues. Griffin's deep in their own territory. But it's Mike Hill again, gets a block, gives a stiff arm, and then goodbye. This is going to be a 92-yard touchdown run, the longest of his career. Hill with 14 carries for 210 yards rushing. He's just 217 away from becoming Western's all-time rushing leader. The Griffins put up 539 yards of total offense, and they shut out William Jewell. 56 to nothing the final, but there was a loss in the win. Senior offensive lineman Brian Childs left the game with an injured knee, and that takes some shine off the performance. Uh, and we hope not the worst. I think the MCL is hurt. Now we're hoping the ACL is not. So it puts a little bit of a damper on it. Uh, but you know, we did what we we're supposed to do. We ran the ball effectively. Uh, we, keep, we got a shutout. Anytime we get a shutout, that's good. We played a lot of kids, and uh, that's a positive. I think we came out and did what we want to do. We want to run the ball. I think we ran, ran the ball very well. and. Uh, did the game plan. I think we did pretty well. I mean, uh, guys were downfield blocking. We didn't pass the ball much, but um, we were up quite a bit. So, I mean, when you're up, you, you run the ball, and that's what we did. And joining us now, head coach Jerry Partridge. First, an update on Brian Childs. You also lost another offensive lineman in that game, too, Leonard Wester. Just an update on both of those guys. I don't think we know the full extent yet. Um, uh, as of this taping, uh, I know that Brian was going to get an MRI either today or tomorrow. Uh, the, the thought process is it's probably a, a, a torn MCL, which would be a two to three to four week process. Um, the ACL is what they're most worried about. If that's gone, then he'll be out for the year. Um, if it's there, then we can get, we can get him back later. Uh, they're a little more positive afterwards. Uh, Leonard Wester kind of did something with his patella and his patella tendon, so I think he'll be out maybe a week or two. How concerning is that right now? Your, your offensive line, five fifth year guys on it, a uh, very talented group, but not very deep there. I know depth has been a concern. Well, we lost some depth this summer with uh, Travis Anderson having some knee surgery that ended up worse than we anticipated. And then uh, Nate O'Neill was a kid we thought was going to be pretty good here at a shoulder in, in fall camp. So, you know, there's some kids there that are going to compete and they got to step up. I mean, Jeremy Jacobson's the first one in there and he's been battling for a starting spot anyway all his, all his career. And, uh, he has all the tools and he just got to go out and produce for us. Oh, enough about injuries. Let's talk about that offensive line and what they did for the ground game. Michael Hill, 210 yards on the ground. Expected that from him. Another guy that I think 
you expected to have a good game, and it's kind of been the talk around the people that follow the program's <laughs> closest. Raphael Spencer, 81 yards on the ground, and I think you predicted something that happened on Saturday. Talk about that. Well, as I said, no, I predicted a lot, a lot of things, and so some can come yes, true. You do. So, um, so it's uh, I make a lot of bold statements, and some some are true, some are false, and I make sure I remind people of the ones that are true. But uh, Roth did a good job. He, he can really run a football. He runs the ball as well as anybody that we have on our team. Uh, you know, he's, he's probably right up there in conference, too, when he got a football in his hand, he does some special things. He's just got to grow in some other areas. Um, and then we, he's got a great player in front of him named Michael Hill. And then Dom Thomas did a good thing. I think Raphael and Dom are kind of a neck-and-neck -neck battle right now to, to see who's going to get those next carries with Dalton being out. Uh, but I think we ran, ran the ball really well. We've blocked well. We have a lot of faith in what our O-line can do. Um, we think we can. Have, we have a lot of different personalities we can be in our offense, and that's that's a positive. Well, a record-setting night on the other side of the ball, and a record I think we figured he would get. David Bass gets the sack record Saturday night. Reflect on that. Great player. Um, he's been a great uh, addition to our program. Obviously, five years ago, and uh, really proud of him. He's one of those guys that you're you're you know as a coach, you're you'll always be grateful to be associated with. I mean, he's a he's a kid that. Uh, I don't want to say a once in a coaching career type of guy, but he's in that class of 10 to 11 of them that is in that class. And he's a tremendous leader, tremendous maturity. Um, he's just been a lot of fun to be around. And we'd really got to step back and try to enjoy him and these other seniors as, as they go through their last year. Bass has got a shot to be a, your next NFL prospect, doesn't he? Well, he is, our, he is an NFL prospect. I mean, it's, I think he'll be in a camp for sure next year. Uh, about a third of the NFL has been through already. Uh, we're pushing a lot of the kids. There's about six or seven we think are those type of guys. They're close, um, it, starting with Michael Hill. I think Michael Hill is one of those guys that are in a combine uh, setting, like the combine we have every spring. I think Michael Hill will be the star of that combine that day, no doubt, because all the things he does measurement-wise. And um, and then he is a good player. I mean, he's got great hands. He's a great blocker. He you know he just he's he's a, he just doesn't make anybody miss in the space. He just waits for you to come near him and he'll stiff arm you to the ground. Okay, one thing that's a, a new tradition this year. It was kind of an old tradition that's been restarted. Is the uh, the touchdown cannon? You know, by the uh, by the fraternities. We've heard it a lot. By we, the way, we have. In fact, they ran out of ammo. We saw that in the highlights. They ran out of ammo because you're scoring thing. so good much. That's a good thing. Your thoughts on that? Did that scare the heck out of you? The first it it hasn't really done it. I mean, I've been in a lot of places where they do it when you're a visitor and it just irritates the you know what out of you. And usually it's when they score. So I'm, as a defense guy's ticking me off. I did notice it twice last Saturday. The first time was we were coming off at halftime. We're walking off, and they shot that thing, and our whole team just ducked. For evil, our whole, evil to our whole team out, ducked. Sir. And um, you know, and then uh, when Chile was on the ground, I don't know if they should have shot it then, but they just shot it. We got there for Chile after and, the touchdown. Yeah, and they shot it, and, and Jackie, our, our student trainer, <laughs> jumped. <laughs> I think so. It scared, it scared her pretty good, and Becky and those people. So it, um, yeah, it's frightening. It takes some getting used to, and, and we'll get used to it. And speaking of the cannon, we've got a military theme game on Saturday, and we'll talk more about that when GSI comes back. I am a Griffin. I think the sky's the limit for us right now. I am a Griffin. Griffin football means everything to me. It's my life. It's what I'm dedicated to. You know, I'm here for the team, for my brothers. I am a Griffin. We got more to play for. We got more to play for. You understand that? This is Griffin football. This, this, this is Griffin football. Win. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is certainly long enough, and it is certainly perfect. Man. Another field goal by oh. Greg Zerline. He is now five for five. The most helpful physical therapist in the world on field goal kicking. When the game's on the line, there's no one better than Zerline. Train like the pros, my friends. Well, Saturday, September 15th is an exciting time for Missouri Western and the Griffins as we prepare for Military Appreciation Day in a partnership that we have with the Missouri Army National Guard. Uh, that day, the Griffins are going to be wearing camo jerseys. I'm in love with these jerseys, actually. I like them a lot. Uh, I think they look great. Um, it's just something different to kind of mix it up. You guys energize before a game. Um, we're going to have a lot of activities on campus, not only with Family Day, but also built around our partnership with the uh, Army National Guard. Just to get the opportunity to come out to Missouri Western and show, out, show off our gear, uh, we're going to have a lot of Humvees, a lot of satellite trucks. We have a helicopter flying in. Um, it just, it's, it's exciting for me 
to have our equipment there and to show our public a little bit about what we do once again. Uh, we're going to be selling game day t-shirts. Some of the proceeds that we raise by selling those t-shirts are going to go to the Wounded Warrior Project. So we want to make sure you get out, support the Griffins on September 15th, uh, support the troops, and then also support the Wounded Warrior Project. Overall, the Military Appreciation Day, it's amazing. My grandpa was a veteran and it's just amazing that some that people go out and put their lives on the line so we can stay here in the U.S. and play football every Saturday and enjoy the freedoms that we have. To give them something to, to watch and, you know, to provide a entertainment for them, this is going to be an honor. Um, you know, the things that they do for us on a daily basis, you know, just this is a small token uh, to repay them for, you know, their duties. Welcome back. Griffins will debut that look on Military Appreciation Day Saturday night against Nebraska Kearney. Jerry Partridge, your thoughts on A, getting to do something like that for the military, and B, just the overall look? Well, we owe them all so much, one. Anybody that's involved in the military, I think it's uh, you know, courage and bravery and just the commitment level it takes to, to do that. And I could never have that type of courage to go put myself, my life, in, in, in harm's way for others. And I think they, they, anything we can do for them is great. And, you know, horns are pretty sharp. I mean, I think your kids are going to like wearing it, and so it's a, it's a great it's a great thing we've started. Well, it's going to be a neat uh, atmosphere Saturday night, and it's going to be a quality opponent coming to town, too. Nebraska Kearney comes in, uh, new MIAA member this year. They've got a good tradition. They've been most recently in the NCAA Division II playoffs last year. They're off to an 0-2 start. Uh, they played uh, Washburn and what looks now like a good Emporia State team. What do you know about the Lopers coming in here? Um, they are a team that uh, scares me a little bit. I think, like you said, they're a playoff team last year. They had a great, great quarterback that's senior uh, season ended last year. Um, they've played two teams that we're not really sure what they have. One's Washburn, who is ranked in the top 10 in the nation. They played them within 10 points. Emporia State looks like they're looking like they're pretty good right now. Um, Emporia State got up on them with some turnovers, some quick things that happened to them. Um, I think the Lopers um, obviously have a great tradition. We, I, I, when I was a player, we used to play against them and they used to box our ears in a little bit. They're pretty good. They were actually the very first game that I coached as a head coach was against Nebraska Kearney. Um, and then we played them the next year. We were 2-0, barely won up there and had a good game at home the first game. But uh, they, they got some athlete, athletes on, the, on offense with some receivers. They can play running back and receiver. Very aggressive, low blocking, uh, some of the option, read option stuff. As you've said, it's about you guys and how well you play each week. What in your mind is, is a key to being successful this week? Well, we've got to get lined up on defense against some of the things they do and make sure we can be sound and, and, and tackle well and beat the blocks and not get cut where you lose, you know, have some running lanes for them. Not let the ball be thrown over the front top. Um, offensively, we got to do what we do. You know, we got to find out what Carney's going to give us and then execute it. Um, some of the kids, that, like for example, that steps in, Jeremy Jacobs, that's got to play well. Um, we don't never really know what kind of game it's going to be offensively, whether they're going to be pounding people or we're going to be drop back passing. I think we have the, the ability to do about all of that stuff. Uh, I'll play them in the kicking game. The, the biggest concern from last week was the penalties. Um, you know, I was pretty much on the refs pretty hard uh, throughout the game. And as you look back on it, maybe a lot of the calls were correct calls. Uh, so I apologize to those guys at the end of watching it, but uh, there were a couple calls I'd like to, you know, I, I don't know about them, but uh, for the most part, we were we were doing some silly things that, to create those penalties, and those things can come back and, and bite you later on. You also head in Saturday night. Uh, the new AFCA poll has been released. Uh, we're ranked number eight. That's the highest national ranking we've had in the AFCA poll. Last week's seven in the D2Football.com poll. I know that poll at the end of the season really isn't the one you want to be ranked high in, but talk about the significance of those polls, if there are any. Whether you're ranked after week two doesn't matter as much as whether you're ranked after week 11. And we're sitting there after week 11 highlight that, that's great. Um, same token is, I think it's nice to be recognized, and I think it's, it creates a, a, you know, kind of a, a groundswell of support from your fans and your, and your student section, the people on your campus, where, hey, like, we're pretty good. We're, we're the top 10 in the country. And uh, whether we deserve that or not, I guess probably at this juncture we do. Uh, I hope this time next week we, we sit there and talk about it again and not talk about how overrated we were. Okay, Coach P, the most important part of this entire segment. As it always is. It usually is. Easley's terrific trio. Is that what we call it? I think it was tantalizing trio. Tantalizing that's okay. Trio. You change the name of it every week. week to week. Easley's three good. questions. All good always got to have Easley's name in it, though. It's that. It's all about you. And you know what, guys? Good questions this week. They're very good. <laughs> Coach P, uh, obviously we don't play fantasy sports, but if we did, no, I don't. who would be your fantasy quarterback you had to draft today, NFL fantasy quarterback? Tom Brady. You know, we've seen a couple of different weather conditions at our games. It's been hot. It's been perfect. A lot of people associate football with cold weather, snow, mud, rain. What is Jerry Partridge's ideal game time conditions? Perfect. Perfect. 
Define that as you will. Perfect. Dark or light, though? We move from playing all night games. Um, you know, I, I love I love playing at night, but I hate waiting around for them. I'd like to get into those afternoon games a little bit where you have some time after the a victory to oh, you, enjoy it. you got to wait a while for that anyway. Now, and in question. the spirit of Military Appreciation Day, we've talked about the camo tops. I know the important question among the guys is black pants or gold pants. Who makes that decision and your preference? Oh, for the players? Yes. Um, ultimately, I make the final decision okay. on that, but I think gold pants is what we're doing. Gold pants. That's going to be a sharp look. It'll, it'll be it'll look good. They both look good. I've seen them both. We're going to look kind of fluorescent. I kind of disagree with you. I'd like the black better, but, you know, you're the head coach. Fashion you're the consult. boss. Look at this guy. I am the head coach, yes. You're right. Coach P, we're glad you are. Good luck. Nebraska Kearney, 6 p.m. on Saturday night. Hope to see you out there. GSI will be right back. I met Gerald in 2010. He came to me after an injury he sustained in Afghanistan back in 2008. And um, he described to me as he was in his Humvee and got blown up by a roadside bomb and that he broke his back, he broke his hip, separated his shoulder. Working with a special forces soldier, to think about the demands that he's got to go through. It's a whole nother concept of training like the pros. So I've had really good progress. Uh, it's been amazing, especially coming up here, working, uh, utilizing the pool uh, for the buoyancy factor, especially at the beginning, uh, to kind of help the actual healing process. I mean, I've kind of transitioned from actual mobility to stability and uh, lately onto strength and resistance and cardiovascular training. And it took him two years and multiple surgeries but it was fun to see him go from broken to back in the Special Forces doing what he does best and that's serving the country. And he was a great inspiration to, to all of us to see him go through that transformation. We roll on with GSI, I'm Dave Rigger, voice of the Griffins, and we're getting to know a Griff today. Natalie Bird, a senior from Carl Junction on the women's golf team. Who's Carl? <laughs> I don't know. I just tell everyone it's Joplin because that's the only place people know him. <laughs> Favorite food? Um, grilled chicken sandwiches. Grilled chicken. Not, no crispy chicken? I'm the pickiest eater on the planet, so. You'd get along with my wife very well. <laughs> if you weren't playing golf, what would you be doing? Um, like a sport? Yeah, whatever. Um, I would probably still be in school, maybe playing soccer. Well, it's a good thing Natalie Burt does play golf because she's a very good golfer. Oh, I'm happy she is. And last week, a great opening to the fall season for her and her team. The Griffins dominated the Nebraska Kearney Fall Classic, beating the field by 10 strokes. Burt was the individual winner with a two-day total of 150. She beat the field by eight shots. The Griffin senior says she's more focused now than ever. Especially to win by eight shots, that just... Um it really made me feel like all my hard work is starting to pay off. And um, believe it or not, I'm actually really excited, more motivated now than ever than to just get back out there and practice even more. The men also off to a solid start this fall. They took part in the Missouri Intercollegiate Golf Championships last week at Porta Chima and finished fourth out of 16 teams. Griffin Soccer opens MIAA play this Friday night at Truman State, where they begin a quest to prove the preseason pollsters wrong. Yeah, you know, they were picked to finish dead last in the conference this season, but the Griffins are already off to a 2-2 two and two start, including a big win over an NAIA national power this past Sunday. Missouri Western Soccer spending Sunday at Spratt Stadium. Griffin's taking on undefeated Graceland. The Yellow Jackets are ranked 16th in the nation in NAIA. And hey, when your coach can do that, that means you're going to be pretty good. Could you do that? Heck no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Back to action. Griffin's on the defensive early and surviving an early Graceland barrage. Kelly Voigt's one of her nine saves on the day. Western overcomes and later first half goes on the offensive. 36th minute corner kick. Teddy Cerna header. Katie Kemp bumps it in. No immediate call, but the official later confirms the goal. Kemp's second of the season. Griffins go up 1-0. Second half, more the same. Casey Ramsell from the corner. Kemp goes up with the goalie. Ball is loose and in. It's another goal for Kemp, her second of the day, and that's the difference. Western with a big win on the home pitch. They knock off Graceland 2-0 to final and a solid all-around performance. We played really well. We played a lot to feet. We connected and we had a lot of opportunities. I mean, they were a good team. They were playing balls over the top and getting in and 
we were lucky to hold them out of the goal. Let's, Let's make go. a difference in conference. Hey, listen, listen, yes. listen, those four games would get ready because they picked us dead last. Now it's time for you to do something about it. And here it is on Friday. You get your first opportunity on Friday, right? Hey, speaking of kicks, Greg Zerline made his NFL regular season debut Sunday for the Rams. Went three for three on field goals, including a 48-yarder. And what should have been a game-winning 47-yarder at the end of the game had St. Louis not let the Detroit Lions march downfield and score to win. Hey, but you know what? That's a good thing. Three for three, Zerline's doing his part. Well, a good start. There's a lot of other NFL kickers that wish they could say the same. I know one down the road that missed a 40 yarder that swung momentum this last week. Yeah, the game kind of rolled downhill for the Chiefs after that, didn't it? It did. We'll be right back. I am your physical therapist. My job is to make you better. Go ahead, give me your worst injury. I can fix it. shoulder you can go to someone else doesn't matter to really get better you gotta go through me i'm fred schunkweiler and this is spine and sport we're here with griffin volleyball players amanda and meredith to talk about a volleyball conditioning drill every volleyball player needs to know how to jump and to jump a lot you know, a volleyball match, you might jump 200 plus times, and those calves are having to rebound off that floor quickly. One of the best ways to do volleyball conditioning for jumping is jump rope. So we're gonna talk about three-dimensional jump roping here. We're just gonna start off jumping rope. But as a volleyball player, we wanna get more dynamic. We wanna start jumping front to back. So they're gonna hop forward, backwards, forward, backwards, very good. We get that forward, backwards, we then go side to side. So now the hips are being driven side to side and the feet have to react to that. You go up for a block in volleyball and you got to shuffle side to side. So now we're going to go rotational. So now we're going to see those toes point in, point out, point in. Now those hips are twisting. That twist helps load those hips more so the glutes are more part of that twist. That right there is a three-dimensional jump rope drill. Awesome drill. Another way we can advance this drill is to travel while we're doing that. So we're going to go back, we're going to create a home base and they're going to have to jump rope but move at the same time. So they've got a little home base or an X. They're gonna start jumping rope. They're gonna take two step jumps forward and then two jumps back to home, then two jumps back. Now they're gonna go sideways, two to the right, and back home, and then two to the left. So we can do the same jump roping drill all on one leg. So we're just gonna demonstrate this real fast. And they're on their right leg, they're gonna go front to back. They're gonna go side to side. They're going to do the twist. That's one leg, and that's getting stronger to help prevent injuries and jumping the whole time, because that's what volleyball is. Strong calves with strong hips that are three-dimensionally balanced. It's trained like the pros at Spine and Sport. Well, it's 72 and sunny, and that means it's time for another tailgate of the week. We're with Ralph and Rodney. Rodney, what do we got going on today? We got a plethora of things here. Oh, we have all kinds of things. We have pork loins, uh, fried tenderloins, fried potatoes, got barbecued hamburgers, chicken. Very important part of the segment right here. I'm with my man, Bo White. He is the prediction king. Now, Bo, I want a prediction on this week's game. Missouri Western, Nebraska Kearney, what's going to happen? Well, I think it's going to be a tough game, but see the Griffins, 28-13. 28-13. You know what? Doesn't matter what the score is. We're just rooting for the team in black and gold. These guys root for the black and gold. Go for it. Be sure to join us this Saturday night, 6 p.m. as the Griffins host Nebraska Kearney on Military Appreciation Night. And, Ryan, those nights are always fun and patriotic, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And a lot of other things going on that night, too. Well, there are. There's a tailgate party in front of the stadium. Make sure you get your Griffin Warfare T-shirt. That's a $10 uh, donation. And all of those funds go to benefit the Wounded Warrior Project. Griffin's going to be wearing camo uniforms. Big American flag out for the national anthem. Definitely going to be a great night to be at the stadium. 6 p.m. Games on MIAA TV, so it's televised, too. And we too, on campus so, as well. Yeah, a whole lot of stuff. All right, speaking of a whole lot of stuff, let's yes. get to role play. 
we don't have a whole lot of time. Wait. Brett, you are 36 year old Atlanta Falcons tight end Ooh. Tony Gonzalez. The flex or hey, you still got it. Looks good, doesn't it? After scoring that touchdown yesterday yes. that began a blowout against the, your former team, the Chiefs, you dunked the ball on the goal post. You used to do that all the time, I but you got booed. Do. Here's a question: You classy or classless? I'm classy. That's my signature touchdown move. I got a nice ovation from Chiefs fans. I, I'm sorry, Chiefs fans. I didn't want to uh, offend you, but I'm okay with that. That's a classy move. That's my signature move. I'm the best ever. Yes, you are. Okay, it's my turn. Ryan Menley. Your new Broncos quarterback, Peyton Manning. How's your neck? How's my neck? Yes, how is your neck? My neck's fine. You know why? Because I just thrashed the Pittsburgh Steelers yesterday and uh, led the Broncos to a win. You know what? Even if my neck was 50%, wouldn't matter. I'm still better than 90% of the quarterbacks in the league. And you know what else? We're going to win the uh, AFC West, too, with the Broncos. Okay, now it's time for the pick em I segment. I can't wait. I can't find the belt, though. Well, Somebody we are stole becoming popular. Well, oh, wait, wait. We've wow, got... Wow, look at this. Well, is, this Straight is... Straight out of the social media world. And, it's, and Max it's, Griffin. it's Max Griffin. Hi, Max. It's Matt Griffins. You've got our belt, Who so I guess you're going to pick the winner. It's me. Oh, yes. It's not. Yes. Well, I don't one like Max Griffin Max. anymore Thank then. You. you know what? It's it's realistic. You know why? Because I went two and five last oh, week. My goodness. Well, you went four two and three. I'd you love still over five. Much better. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's Hall of Famer. Let's get after it this week. Max and I, by the way, got together on our picks. Ours are yeah. joint this week. Okay. We talked about All this. All right. Northwest hosts Fort Hayes this Saturday. Who's got? Well, I tell you what. Not a good performance last week from the Bearcats, but Fort Hayes State, they don't look very good. Max, no. we hate to say it, but Northwest wins. I would agree with you on that. Emporia hosts Central Oklahoma. Well, how about Emporia State? Two and zero. Oh. Two and zero, oh, and I tell you what, they look like they're for real. Good road win last week. They'll handle the Broncos. The Broncos go to 0-3. Four State wins. Don't you think, Max? He, he agrees. I guess I have to agree with you. Central at Lindenwood. There's not really many good games in the MIAA this week. This might be the marquee game, if you want to call it that. And not really. Well, Max and I agree. This is an intriguing game. Lindenwood at home for the first time in the MIAA, I believe. They've been on the road two weeks in a row. Uh, Central Missouri wins this game. Central Missouri's a good team. No, give me Lennon. Wow. Just to be oh different. Oh, boy. Okay. okay, NFL Chiefs at the Buffalo Woo. Bills. No chance the sure Chiefs win on the yeah. road. They Chiefs can't even win at not, home. Chiefs haven't won in Buffalo in my lifetime. I don't think they'll win this Sunday either. Give me okay. the Bills. Max, your thoughts? Okay, all right. Yep, I'll agree on that too. Denver at Atlanta. Let's just throw that one out there. It's intriguing as well. Um, give me Atlanta. They'll beat the Broncos. You know, Peyton Manning, sharp. I didn't think he was Colt sharp. Atlanta no. goes to 2 0. No, give me the Broncos. They're going undefeated this year, baby. I don't know. Undefeated. Don't know. Okay. Eh, probably not. That's GSI for this week. Max, Max thanks for being thanks here. Thanks for being We're here. We're excited. Yeah. Max is going to be on the show a little more this year as well. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to drag you here. So uh -huh. We'll see you Saturday for Griffin football against Nebraska Kearney. As always, Brett Easley. GoGriffins.com for tickets and go Griffs.